Hello and welcome to the program, Sula's Big Adventures, with me, Sula. In this episode, I'm going to be reviewing the Mead LX90 ACF 12-inch Schmidt Cassegrain Telescope. I've had this telescope for nearly two years now. I made one video about it <laughs> the day it arrived, but that video wasn't really a review since I had just received it. Now that I've had it for nearly two years, I feel more comfortable reviewing it and giving my impressions of this telescope. This telescope, the LX90 12 inch, is sold as a package. You cannot buy at OTA unless you find a used one. The LX90 model is sold on a dual fork mount, fully computerized go-to, along with a sturdy field tripod. It also comes with an 8x50 finder scope, a Mead 4000 Super Plossel 26mm eyepiece, and a 1.25 inch diagonal. It comes with Mead's advanced coma-free optics, which eliminate coma, and the UHTC coatings for extra transmission. All Mead Schmidt Cassegrain telescopes, I believe, now come with the ACF and the UHTC. The computer that drives this mount has the AudioStar hand controller with the 30,000 plus object database and audio where a man and a woman tell you about each object, or most of them anyway. Some are just generic information such as category, diffuse nebula. It also comes with genuine Sony GPS for quickly obtaining your date, time, and location and allowing very fast alignment. The computer that drives the mount is very accurate in locating, centering, and tracking the objects. And it has a slew speed of 6.5 degrees per second. It has DC servo motors with encoders. The control panel has a plug for the hand controller two auxiliary ports, and port for a 12-volt power cable. The mount can be powered by eight C-cell batteries, which is very nice because you don't have to worry about cable wrap, but they don't last long in cold weather. So I recommend getting the additional Universal Mead AC power adapter for it because it doesn't come with a power adapter. This telescope, the tube and dual fork mount weighs 57 pounds, the tripod weighs 19 pounds, and so the total assembled weight is 76 pounds. To assemble it, you must lift the 57 pound fork and telescope to waist level and get it onto a little peg poking out of the top of the tripod. It ain't easy, but it couldn't be easier to set up and start viewing once you get the telescope onto the tripod. You just level it parallel with the ground, point it to Polaris or to Magnetic North, let the GPS connect, and then you center two stars that it automatically goes to. Then you're ready to stargaze. You can select the auto tour, or you can just select your own object from the database at that point. Other than the fact that the telescope needs to reach thermal equilibrium, I can pull this thing out of my garage and be ready to stargaze on my first object in five minutes. It's that quick. The LX90 was manufactured at the Mead plant in Tijuana, Mexico. And the primary, secondary, and corrector plate glass blanks were manufactured in the United States exclusively for Mead. The body of the telescope comes with two well-placed handles to assist you in getting the telescope onto the tripod peg. The telescope has an aperture of 12 inches or 304 millimeters, focal length of 3048 millimeters, giving it a focal ratio of F10. The optics are superb. They're diffraction limited with a limiting stellar magnitude of 15.1. It has a theoretical resolving power of 0.38 arc seconds, but realistically no Earth-based telescope can achieve that kind of resolution. However, I have split some very close stars with this telescope, including the famous double-double in Lyra, the Epsilon Lyrae, 2.3 arc seconds apart, Mu Draconis, 
BA and BB two arc seconds apart, and on a night of good seeing, 12 Lysinus 1.9 arc seconds apart. The optics on the telescope are nothing short of amazing. It's given me incredible, crisp, stunning views of star clusters, galaxies, nebulae. Looking at the Great Orion Nebula in this telescope was like looking at wow. billowing cirrus clouds in the daytime. It was as if I could see the stars <laughs> being born. I've seen some very faint objects, such as the Bubble Nebula, the Cocoon Nebula, the colliding galaxies in Corvus, the California Nebula, NGC 1499, a small galaxy in Pegasus, wow. NGC 7317, and IC 405, the Flaming Star Nebula, to name just a few. But the best, most stunning views I've had with this telescope were jaw-dropping looks at some old favorites like M13, M22, Very Caroline's cool. Rose, and the Helix Nebula. And of course, it's a beast on the planet. Sirtis Major on Mars and the polar caps were clear as day when Mars was at opposition. Saturn's rings in glorious detail, the Cassini division, the shadow cast by the rings on the surface, Jupiter's bands and great red spot, wow. all in beautiful, beautiful crisp detail. For astrophotography, the telescope um, just set up like this in Altaz mode works great for planetary imaging, but for deep sky, you can take some short exposures in the Altaz mode up to about, well, the website says five minutes, but I think that's a typo. I think after 45 seconds, field rotation would become apparent. Maybe I'm wrong. But if you purchase the additional equatorial wedge, you can put the telescope into equatorial mode and take exposures as long as you want. You can add a focal reducer to make it f6.3. There are a few that work with this telescope. There's the Antares and the Lepus and even the Celestron uh, works on here. I'm having a hard time thinking of anything bad to say about this telescope. It does have image shift, like every Schmidt cast grain telescope I've ever looked through. As a visual observer, I don't see what difference that makes. After all, you have to refocus after changing the eyepieces. Anyway, the LX90 comes with a focuser which moves the primary mirror, and that's what results in the image shift. But if that bothers you, or you have to address it because of astrophotography, then you can get the Mead Zero Image Shift Focuser. Now, if you look for this on sale on the internet, it will say that it doesn't work with the LX90, which is true because the LX90 doesn't come with the focus port like the LX200 does. However, you can easily resolve this issue by purchasing um, a motor for the Zero Image Shift and you focus it by using that motor instead of the hand controller like you do on the LX200. And it, you can buy that from a third party company called Rigel Systems. It's not very expensive and this is the motor. Dr. Paul will make it for your telescope specific configuration. Um, and I'll give you his website if you're interested in that. I don't have the zero image shift focuser on my telescope right now, but uh, this is what it looks like. And if you really only need this, if you intend to use the LX90 for astrophotography, or if you just can't tolerate refocusing every time you move the telescope to a different object. Another thing you can do to get rid of image shift is you can get a feather touch focuser made uh, by Starlight Instruments. It's very expensive and it took a very long time for it to come. Another alternative is the um, feather light focuser that just goes, you replace the knob with this. It's a lot cheaper. They're both made by Starlight Instruments. This one was a lot cheaper than this, which actually goes at the back of the telescope. And I don't have it on there now because I have a very nice diagonal on here. So those are some options for eliminating image shift on this telescope, or you can just refocus every time you move it. This telescope came with a visual back 
and a one and a quarter inch diagonal. I thought the diagonal was cheap and mass produced, so I replaced mine with this very nice, highly reflective diagonal made by Botter Planetarium that I'm very happy with that uses a prism. It's a BBHS. Um, which is phenomenal. But when I want to image the planets, I use the flip mirror because with the flip mirror, you can easily go back and forth between the camera and the eyepiece. I did a lot of research on the Mead line of Schmidt Cassegrain telescopes because they have a lot of models. <laughs> they have the LX85, the LX90, the LX200, LX600, and the LX850. And it turns out the only difference between these models has mostly to do with the electronics and not the optics. The LX85, for example, was meant to go on an LX85 equatorial mount. And other than that, it has the exact same optics as the LX90. The LX200 comes with the focus port and a database of over 100,000 objects and the telescope comes with mirror lock to prevent image shift. I looked at the LX200, but it weighs 133 pounds, totally assembled. In fact, I wanted the LX90 14 inch, but I knew I couldn't lift it, so I wasn't gonna get the 200. The LX600 comes with the Mead built-in auto guider, and it's F8, and it comes with an internal Crayford style focuser, also eliminating image shift. The LX850 is also F8, and it comes with the built-in auto guider, Crayford focuser, and a much beefier tripod, much heavier too. But all of those models are identical in terms of the optics, other than the focuser and the shorter focal length on the LX600 and the LX850. They all have Mead's UHTC coatings and the ACF for coma elimination. And they all have, as far as I know, the shot borosilicate glass. So the optics are basically identical and meet the same Mead standards of optical excellence. I have never, not once in two years, been disappointed in this telescope. This Mead LX90 12 inch ACF telescope is by far and away the best telescope I've ever owned. If I can think of just one negative thing to say about it, it would be that it's heavy <laughs> and hard to get on that peg. And that's why I have it permanently on this JMI wheelie bar. I don't even know how I got it on here. I had to lift the whole 76 pound thing and heft it onto the wheelie bar. But since then, that's where it stayed. And until I can no longer see the Milky Way out here, as this place gets more and more developed and more and more light polluted, or I become so infirm that I can no longer even wheel it out here onto the driveway, it will stay on this wheelie bar and take me to the heavens. And anyway, I can't really complain about the weight. For a telescope of this size aperture, 76 pounds is not much. For example, the Skywatcher 12-inch GoTo Dobsonian, whose optics cannot compare to this, that telescope weighs 96 pounds. The Mead LX90 12-inch Schmidt Cassegrain Telescope, well, when I bought it, mine was $4,999, but now you can get it for only $4,299 from Orion. So the LX90 weighs 20 pounds less than that Skywatcher, and it does cost $2,000 more, but comparing a, this telescope to a Dobsonian, this telescope's optics were far superior to a Dobsonian reflector. I don't own a 12-inch Dobsonian, so I can't make a side-by-side -side comparison, but I do own a 10-inch Dobsonian, and it's a great telescope, but the optics on that Dobsonian, well, for one thing, they have diffraction spikes, all Dobsonians do, which are annoying at high magnification, and the optics, they're just not as crisp as they are on the Mead Schmidt Cassegrain. And then the other negative would be the image shift, which can be annoying, but it can be addressed by purchasing the zero image shift focuser or other things that I mentioned. So, do I recommend the Mead LX90 12-inch Schmidt Cassegrain telescope? Hell yeah! I love this telescope. I love it. I named her Artemis, and she is a wonderful companion, <laughs> and I love that she talks, and she's given me great pleasure for the last two years. I give this telescope five stars. 
and I'm not promoting this telescope, <laughs> Orion, who owns me, um, would not even let me post my, <laughs> after asking me to, wouldn't even let me post my review about this telescope. So I'm not promoting it. I truly, this is my honest opinion, think this is a wonderful telescope and I highly recommend it. This is my unbiased opinion after owning it for almost two years. So that's it for my review of the Mead LX90 12 inch ACF Schmidt Cassegrain Telescope. I'll see y'all soon. Dark skies forever. Sula, sun and off.